This video will discuss chapter 9-5, the quadratic formula. So you may want to think about taking this formula and putting it in your notes, as we're going to use this formula a lot today. And so this is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So a couple key things to keep in mind with this formula is that you are going to first do inside the radical and then take the square root of all of that. And secondly, this negative b over 2a should look very similar. I mean, if you took off this plus minus everything else, this negative b over 2a should look something like the equation for the line of the axis of symmetry, right? And so there's not, not a ton of magic necessarily in this formula. That's partly where that's coming from. Um, and then remember, this plus minus means you're actually going to go negative b plus the square root of all this divided by 2a and negative b minus the square root of all that divided by 2a. And I'm going to show you exactly how it is that we're going to use this in just a second. But please make sure that you get this formula copied down into your notes. So let's think about how we could use that formula to solve a problem like this. So you got x squared minus 12x plus 20. And so the first thing that you probably want to do is get, make sure we get a, b, and c copied down correctly, keeping in mind where are positive and where are negative. So this is a 1 in front of the a, or I guess in front of the x squared, so it's ax squared. bx, it's negative 12, and then c is positive 20. So now I'm going to take these three numbers, right, I'm going to put them into this formula. So I've got negative b, so this is going to be negative, negative 12, plus or minus, square root, of b squared, so that's negative 12 squared. Well, I'm gonna run out of room here, I should do this. Sorry, I should do this below. So this is gonna be negative, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 12 squared, minus four times one, times 20, all of this over two, times 1. Now I want to make sure that we're all okay with where this came from. This is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So as I simplify, and I think it's really um, easy to get confused with things, you try to do too much of this in your head. So as I simplify, this is going to become positive 12, right, because negative, negative, these cancel out, become positive, plus or minus the square root Negative 12 times negative 12 is a positive 144, so just be careful, that's always going to be a positive, anything squared, minus 4 times 1 times 20, so this is 4 times 20, this is minus 80, and all of this over 2. Alright, so as I simplify that, and so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify 144 minus 80, and make sure that we are all getting the same thing. So I've got, I'm going to take a new board. I've got 12 plus or minus 144 minus 80 is 64 over 2. I want you to notice that I still haven't split this apart. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. I'm trying to simplify as far as I can. The square root of 64 is a nice round number, so I'm going to actually simplify that. So I got plus or minus 8 over 2. Now at this point I can't go any further, so I'm essentially going to break this into two problems. This is going to become 12 plus 8 over 2, and then on this side it will be 12 minus 8 over 2, right? So this is the plus minus, plus minus. So I simplify this, this becomes 20 over 2, so this is going to be 10, and then over here I got 4 over 2, and so this will be 2. So coming back to the original problem, which was this, the answers for x that will make this statement true are 10 and 2. So x equals 10, x equals 2. Now, coming back to this problem for just a second, a lot of times, I mean this one we're practicing using the quadratic formula, but a lot of people would have said, well, couldn't I have just done 20 and negative 12 
and then this would be negative 10 and negative 2, and then I would have done x minus 10, x minus 2 equals 0, right? And you could have split them apart. You would end up with x equals 10 and x equals 2 as your two solutions, which obviously is the same thing that you got here. Keep in mind what we're doing is we're practicing the quadratic formula. So, so even if you see that something like this is going to work, in, when, when you get different types of problems, yeah, I'm going to want you to use the most efficient way. But for now, I want you to practice using the quadratic formula. And the advantage to giving you a problem like this is that you get nice, neat numbers. All right, let's talk about what happens when it's not nice and, nice and neat. So we get something like this. So this is going to be A equals 3, B equals 5, and C equals negative 12. So, I'm going to use this formula. Negative b, so that's negative 5, plus or minus, square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times c. All of this over... 2 times 3. So this is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so now we're going to start simplifying. The negative 5 can stay. This is going to become 25. This becomes 12 and negative 12. So this is minus negative 144 over 6. Now, this obviously becomes positive, so this is going to be, well, I guess this one is actually going to turn out to be a somewhat nice, neat number. Uh, this is going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of positive 169 over 6. So now I'm going to do the square root of 169 which is 13, so I got negative 5 plus or minus 13 over 6. Now, my two possible answers are going to be negative 5 plus 13 over 6 and negative 5 minus 13 over 6. On this side, this becomes negative 8 over 6, which would be the same as negative 4 thirds. So that's not a terrible answer. And then I got negative 18 over 6, which is the same as negative 3. It reduces to negative 3. So my answer for what would make this statement true are when x is negative 4 and x is negative 3. Now, sometimes this doesn't necessarily work out, and so you want to round it when we get down here. We'll kind of practice that a little bit later. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about is what's called a discriminant. And a lot of times people use the discriminant to figure out... Oh, I think I spelled this wrong. Use the discriminant to figure out whether or not, how many real, real solutions there are going to be. So... This, what's inside the radical, is called the discriminant. And so b squared minus 4ac. If inside, so that's just this part. If inside is negative, there are zero real solutions. Because as you know, negative, the neg square root of negative 4, there is no number multiplied to, to itself that will give you negative 4. So that means there are zero real solutions. If the number inside is zero, it means there is one real solution. And if the number inside is positive, there are two real solutions. So let me show you this um, and how this kind of looks in what we could call real life. So if you'll notice, when we did this problem, which was the last one we did, this, the discriminant was 169. 169 is a positive number, and you'll see that we got two real solutions. Had this number been 0, so this was 0 instead of 169, this would have been negative 5 so this would become a 0, right? Because the square root of 0 is 0. So it's been 5 plus 0, or negative 5 plus 0, negative 5 minus 0. You'd end up getting the same answer. 
right? It'd both be negative five sixths, which is why we say there is one real solution because these two end up being the same. So if this is a zero, this becomes a zero, making both of these zeros. And when you go negative five plus zero, it's the same as negative five minus zero. Had it been a, had it been a negative number, like this was negative 169, there is no possible solution for what could go here, which means that this, there is no answer for it, which essentially means that there is no solution for the original problem. So, coming back to that, what does this mean? Well, the, these real solutions are essentially the x-intercepts, meaning that this, if it's negative inside, has zero x-intercepts. So in other words, with the x-axis, it never crosses the x-axis. It might be up there. If, there is, if the answer inside is number inside, the discriminant is zero, then there's one real solution, which means maybe it crosses, which means that the x-axis and the vertex are the same, right? So that is its one x-intercept. And then similar to what we did on the most recent quiz, the, if it has two real solutions, it has two x-intercepts, meaning it crosses the x-axis twice. So let's practice finding how many real solutions there are just by using discriminants. So remember, all I'm using is b squared minus 4ac. And so if I go b squared, so there's my b, so it's going to be the square root of 5, sorry, that's not a very good looking 5, 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times 3, so this is going to be the square root of 25 minus 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. This ends up giving me the square root of negative 23. Negative 20, there is no such thing as square root of negative 23, right? There's no real answer to this, which means this has zero solutions or zero real solutions. Okay, so that's what this tells me. Now, if we use this problem down here, this is going to be the square root of b squared, so that's 11 squared minus 4 times a times c. So this is going to be the square root of 121 minus, uh, let's go the other way, so it's 2 times, five, two times 15 is 30, 30 times... 4 is 120. So this now is the square root of 1. Now you may know what the square root of 1 is, but to be honest, that's not what we're worried about. We're worried about is this number positive, negative, or 0? And this number is positive, so there are going to be two real solutions for this problem. Okay, so as we're talking about the discriminant, a lot of times what, what happens is you try to figure out the discriminant first, because you can then use that later in the problem and it helps to, so that I don't have to get too far into the problem before I realize there is no answer. So for example, in this problem, if I were trying to solve this problem, here I know there's no answer. I don't have to go through and do a lot of this formula because I already figured out that there's no answer. If I go through and I do this and I'm like, okay, it's the square root of one, I can actually just substitute the square root of one in right there because I already figured out that part of the formula. And we're gonna practice a lot of this in class. All right, thanks very much for watching this video on the quadratic formula. Uh, don't forget to do the problems on the bottom of the page. I'll see you in class.